What's up everybody? So, in case you haven't played lately and you weren't aware, uh, there's another animation cancel exploit you can do to basically get 5 dodges out of 1 stamina bar. Uh, you just get 2 double dodges and then a regular dodge. And judging by how consistently all the light players seem to be hitting it, I'm assuming they just macroed it. And since we're not getting any big updates until October, and this doesn't affect PvE, I'm assuming this probably isn't going to be fixed. So, sadly, this is going to be my last New World uh, build guide or PvE video, or PvP video, I should say, uh, until the October update at least. Uh, I took some time off work when the update's supposed to go live, so hopefully it doesn't get delayed. Uh, but looking forward to grinding a fresh start character, and I'll probably start making some content for it again around then. Uh, but in the meantime, not really sure. Might not make any videos, might make something with whatever I end up playing. Uh, but just PvP in New World, uh, especially if you're medium double melee, just really, really isn't fun right now. So, I'm going to take a break for a bit, uh, but I do hope you guys find this guide helpful. If you still are playing, or if you're a new player, uh, feel free to throw any questions in the comments. I still respond to pretty much everybody, unless they're just being stupid or toxic, and I just ignore them. But, uh, yeah, I've tried every combination to think of for... A hatchet, spear, and fire staff at this point, and this is the best what I came up with to make it so both weapons at least do decent damage. Uh, there really is no good way to have both do full damage. So I uh, hope you enjoy. Alright, so we'll go over the hatchet spear build first quick, and then go over the fire staff build. Uh, the idea with the hatchet spear build is just be as tanky as possible and still do good damage. So for the helmet, we have Shirking Heels, Enchanted Ward, and Critical Retribution. Uh, I really like Crit Red just because when you're in a clump, it's pretty much guaranteed to proc, and it's a lot of extra crit chance. Uh, Enchanted Ward, I was running Shirking Fortification for a long time, but Enchanted Ward just is way more consistent, at, uh, especially against ranged players. Uh, for the chest piece, we have Frigid Dawn with Shirking Heels. Same thing for the legs. For the gloves, I have Shirking Heels and Chansey Ward and one of our three refreshing stacks. Uh, Tumblr's Feet Wraps still have Shirking Heels on there. For our gems, we're 29% Slash Resist and 25% Thrust Resist. My advice for your gems would just be whatever you're dying to, just stack gems against that. Uh, I just build this way so I can out-trade multiple melee players at the same time. For the earring, we got another one of our refreshing stacks in. Uh, regenerating, it's just nice to have a little bit of extra healing. And fortifying toast. You can go empowering toast, but in my opinion, this is just way stronger. It's almost 100% uptime as long as you're still just drinking potions. And even in my hatchet spear build, I don't need mana pots, but I take them anyway. Uh, just in case I want to proc the extra fortify, I'll just drink a mana pot. Uh, but between fortifying toast, the 25% fortification you get from Tumblr's Feet Wraps and the 54% fortification you get from Fortifying Perforate, you can be tankier than a heavy player, still do more damage than them, and have more self-sustain than anybody uh, because of Blood Drinker and Shirking Heals. So Blood Drinker, I keep going back and forth whether I want to go Keen Awareness or just leave Slash Damage on there. It's It's... Definitely noticeable uh, for the hatchet when you do or don't have slash damage on there. Uh, but crit is just super important for spear and fire staff. So probably end up just leaving it like this. Uh, for the amulet, there's really nothing I would change here. Uh, stamina recovery until this gets nerfed, which I don't think it ever will at this point. It's no point not running it. Uh, divine, because we have shirking heals and blood drinker, just get a ton of extra healing out of this and thrust protection because uh, on your amulet you should always be running some kind of protection preferably one of the physical ones whereas something like enchanted ward says it does four percent damage mitigation against light and heavy attacks that's just a base damage reduction so in reality it's like two and a half percent less damage uh, whereas something like your gems or a protection on your amulet is an actual flat reduction. Uh, I'm still running Biobomb just because I never bothered to farm Dark Ascent 
Dark Ascent is definitely better, especially for 1VX. Uh, it's just a bunch of free life steal. And Biobomb counts as a weapon swap, which is terrible for both of these weapons. Uh, for your hatchet, it causes you to lose your Berserk. And since it counts as a weapon swap, uh, if you have Fortifying Perforate up, it takes that away too. All in all, not great. Uh, but for the spear, we have Fortifying Perforate, Pen Backstab, and Trenchant Strikes, just since we're playing for Coup de Gras. Uh, for the hatchet, we have Pen Backstab, Vicious, and Keen Berserk. I've tried having Keen Berserk on the armor. I tried swapping Vicious for something like Plague Crits or Keen Speed. Uh, but since we're losing damage to Blood Drinker, it's just a very noticeable gap when you have these perks versus anything else. Uh, so if you don't have max crafting, I would say just farm a Berserker's Axe from the PvP track and put Keen Berserk on it. Uh, the Moonstone is actually pretty important. So with the Moonstone, it says while all your abilities on cooldown, but it counts as active while Berserk is still up. It's treated as if it's on cooldown. So basically you pop Berserk, throw your social distance no matter what, and as soon as you hit the button for Raging Torrent, Torrent goes on cooldown, so all your hits of Torrent get the damage bonus, and every light attack after that gets the damage bonus. Uh, it's pretty important that you take a damage over time ring glass for your Moonstone, even though it drops from 20% extra base damage to 17, and we're really just going for damage with the hatchet here. Uh, you definitely want to damage over time ring glass because in our skill tree, we take this passive. And if you don't hit them with social distancing for the slow, you want some kind of debuff on them so they take an extra 10% base damage. Uh, and the damage over time rune glass counts as a debuff. So you definitely want this passive, and you definitely want to dot on them pretty much at all times. Uh, since we're here, might as well go over the skill tree. For me, this never changes. Uh, these are basically all the best passives. The only thing I would even consider dropping would be dropping aim throw. If you don't ever use it uh, for this, that way you can go heavy attack straight into Torrent. Uh, a lot of people say not to take the last hit of Raging Torrent, but it still counts as part of the ability, which ties into this here. So it's an extra 20% damage if they're low health, and if you hit them with all of Torrent by this point, they're probably going to be below 30% health. Uh, for the spear, the idea is soften them up with Perforate. A perforate puts a 30% rend, a 30% weaken on them, and with our damage over time rune glass, they're now taking 30% extra damage. If you dodge into your vault kick, you get 20% cooldown reduction here and 30% here. So if you dodge vault kick, that's 50% cooldown reduction, and then sweep stab, that's another 20% from this and 15% from this. Combined with our three stacks of refreshing, you can just cycle these over and over and over. And as long as you're hitting people, infinite cooldowns. Uh, you basically never have to light attack. Uh, for the attributes, I just go even 200 split still. Uh, I tried messing around with this a little bit, going like 250 dex, 150 con, but I just like being as tanky as possible. I don't like giving up the 10% armor. Alright, for the fire staff version of the build, I went Shirking Heels, Enchanted Ward, Fire Harnessing on every piece that I could get. So it's pretty much the same as the Hatchet Spear build. Uh, this one piece, I couldn't find anything with Shirking Heels, so this is close enough. We still have four stacks of Shirking Heels plus Shirking Blessing. I don't change anything for my jewelry, still all the same stuff. Uh, we end up with 26 Slash Resist and 24 Thrust Resist in this build because you lose a little bit of mitigation with the uh, rune glass and the armor, but make up for it anyway with that random piece of slash conditioning, uh, which if you didn't know, the, all the conditioning perks count as absorption. So as soon as you say you take one hatchet swing to the back, you all of a sudden, this number gets bumped up from 26 slash resist to 31% slash resist. It counts as absorption. Uh, for Inferno, I pretty much just put fireball on it, call it a day. Uh, for my attributes, I just go 200 con, 50 dex, everything else into strength. Uh, for the fire staff tree, I don't think I've changed anything here in a long time, aside from I don't take this perk anymore because Alacritus Punishment exists. 
uh, I don't take this perk with the strength version of the build because the smolder applying 20% longer really doesn't do anything for you because your burn ticks for like 20. So you play this version of the build, uh, strength inferno, you're really not going for uh, just getting stacks of burn on people like a lot of range players normally would. You basically are using this just to burn out into the clump, throw a fireball at their feet immediately, and at that point they'll have a few stacks of uh, smolder on them, so pillar actually hits pretty decently hard. Uh, but that should be about everything. Hopefully you found this helpful, and if you have any questions, again, feel free to throw them in the comments, and I'll see you in October.